In this video, we're going to discuss how to balance chemical equations, how to determine the limiting reagent, as well as how to calculate the theoretical yield and actual yield of a reaction. So, first of all, balancing equations. The goal of balancing equations is to make sure that you have the same number of atoms for each element on both sides of the reaction. And that makes sense because of conservation of mass. Whatever atoms you have on the left, you have to have on the right as well. So to look at how this works, let's take a look at this example reaction where we have propane reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. The first thing you want to do is tally up the number of atoms you have on both sides of the reaction. So we know that we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this reaction. And if we look on the left side, we have three carbon atoms, eight hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. So this is three, eight, and two. If we look on the right side, we have one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and three oxygen atoms. Two from carbon dioxide, one from oxygen. So one, two, and three. If we now take a look, we can see that this equation is not balanced because for each element, there are different numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation. So the way to balance the equation is to balance them one element at a time. So we'll go ahead and start off with carbon. If we look at carbon, there are three carbon atoms on the left, one carbon atom on the right. So that means we need to add carbon atoms to the right side. Carbon is in carbon dioxide, and for each molecule of carbon dioxide, there is one carbon atom. So if we want three carbon atoms, like there is on the left, that means we need three molecules of carbon dioxide. So what you do is, you change the stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide to three. So if the stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide is now three, you can then revise your numbers. So now, instead of one, two, and three, you now have three carbon atoms, hydrogen didn't change, it's still two, and oxygen is now seven. So now we're one third of the way done. We have balanced carbon on both sides. So next, let's take a look at hydrogen. We have eight hydrogens on the left side, two hydrogens on the right side. So again, we need to add more hydrogen atoms to the right side. Hydrogen is in water, each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. So if we want eight hydrogen atoms, we need four water molecules. So let's change this to a four. If this is four, again, we can correct our numbers. Now we have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and a total of six plus four, 10 oxygen atoms. So, Finally, the last one we need to balance is oxygen. We have two oxygen atoms on the left, 10 on the right. So that means we need to add oxygen atoms on the left side. Oxygen is an O2, which has two oxygen atoms per molecule. So if we want 10 oxygen atoms on the left, we need five O2 molecules. If this is five, then we now have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and 10 oxygens. So if we look at what we're left over on both sides, three, eight, and 10, three, eight, and 10, we can now see that we have the balanced equation. So in the balanced equation, that means for every molecule of propane, I need five molecules of oxygen for a complete reaction. And that will form three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water. Okay, so that's how to balance equations. Moving on, let's take a look at the limiting reactant or the limiting reagent. This is the reactant that is completely consumed when the reaction is complete. What I mean by this is, if we take a look at this reaction, for every molecule of propane, we need five molecules of oxygen for a complete reaction. We need this one to five ratio. However, if your reactants are not added in a one to five ratio, then one of these two reactants is going to be used up first, and the other one, there will be left over. There will be excess. The reactant that gets used up first is what we call the limiting reagent. And the limiting reagent is important because it determines the amount of product that can be formed. 
Essentially, once that limiting reagent is used up, the reaction can't proceed anymore. You can't proceed any produce any more product. So again, the limiting reagent determines how much product can be formed. Next, we can look at theoretical yield. Theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be formed. And this is a value that we calculate using the limiting reagent of the reaction. Now, the theoretical yield describes in theory the maximum amount of product that can be formed. In reality, we never actually produce that much product. The amount of product that we actually produce is called the actual yield. And since the actual yield is always less than the theoretical yield, we often calculate what is called the percent yield, which is simply the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. And this will give you a percent value, essentially telling you for the theoretical yield, how much did you actually get? Okay. So to look at how to apply these concepts we just discussed, let's take a look at this example question. What is the limiting reagent if 66 grams of propane is reacted with 256 grams of oxygen? And if only 150 grams of carbon dioxide is formed, what is the percent yield? So to start, let's try to determine the limiting reagent. To determine the limiting reagent, you need to see with this ratio 1 to 5, which one are you going to run out of first? Now these ratios are based off molar ratios or per molecule. So in this case, you can't do it with grams. So the first step is to convert the grams of propane and the grams of oxygen to moles. So 66 grams of propane, if I want to convert this to moles of propane, I need to know the molar mass of propane. If we look at the periodic table, carbon has an atomic weight of 12, hydrogen has an atomic weight of 1. 12 times 3 is 36, plus 8 times 1 is 44. So that means the molar mass of propane is 44 grams. That allows us to set up the stoichiometric ratio. All of these stoichiometric ratios are equal to 1. For every mole of propane, I have 44 grams of propane. And when I set this up, you can see how the grams of propane, these units cancel out, leaving us with our desired units, moles of propane. Then 66 divided by 44 is 1.5. So that means that we added one and a half moles of propane to this reaction. Next, we can do the same thing for oxygen. So 256 grams of O2. The molar mass of oxygen, well if you look at the periodic table, an oxygen atom has an atomic weight of 16. So O2 will have a molar mass of 32 grams per mole of oxygen. Again we can see how the units cancel out. So we have 256 divided by 32, which is 8. 8 moles of oxygen. So now to figure out which one is the limiting reagent, we can look at either. So let's say we look at propane. Well, we know for propane, for every mole of propane, I need five moles of oxygen for a complete reaction. This allows us to set up another stoichiometric ratio. For every mole of propane, C3H8, I need five moles of oxygen. And once the units, moles of propane, cancel out. And then we're left with one and a half times five, which is 7.5 moles of oxygen. So this tells us for a complete reaction, I need seven and a half moles of oxygen. However, we have eight moles of oxygen. This means that we're going to be uh, there's going to be excess oxygen left over once the propane has been used up. And this is going to tell us that propane is the limiting reagent. And in this case, it actually didn't matter too much whether I calculated the amount of oxygen necessary to react with the amount of propane or the opposite. If you had done the same calculation, converting the moles of oxygen to the number of moles of propane necessary for a complete reaction, you would have gotten a value of uh, 1.6.
So that means we need 1.6 moles of propane to react completely with 8 moles of oxygen. And since we don't have 1.6 moles of propane, we only have 1.5, that tells us the same information, which is propane is the limiting reagent. So once we know propane is the limiting reagent, we can then determine the percent yield, which we require two pieces of information. We need the actual yield, which is given, 150 grams of carbon dioxide. So we need to know the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is determined using the limiting reagent, propane. So we know we have one and a half moles of propane that is going to react completely. And now we need to set up a stoichiometric ratio. So according to this reaction, for every mole of propane, we're going to form three moles of carbon dioxide. So that's the ratio we'll set up. Three moles of carbon dioxide per mole of propane. Again, moles of propane cancels out. So this means that one and a half moles of propane can form 1.5 times 3, which is 4.5 moles of carbon dioxide. Now, this is in moles, our actual yield is in grams, so we need to turn carbon dioxide into grams. And if we take a look at the periodic table, carbon has an atomic weight of 12, oxygen is 16. So 12 plus 16 times 2 will give us 44 grams per mole of oxygen. And once moles of carbon dioxide cancels out, then we have 4.5 times 44. Now, the half, that's easy, half of 44 is 22. 4 times 44, that's 88 times 2, which is 176. So 176 plus 22, that gives us 198 grams of CO2. This value that we just calculated here, this is the theoretical yield. So in theory, this is the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that could be produced. However, as we're told in this question stem, we didn't produce 198 grams of carbon dioxide. We only produced 150 grams. So that allows us to calculate the percent yield, which is equal to the theoretical, or sorry, the actual yield, 150 grams, divided by the theoretical yield of 198 grams. In rounding numbers, 198 is close to 200. 150 over 200 is 3 fourths. And 3 fourths, we know, is about 75%. So that means in this reaction, propane was the limiting reagent, and that resulted in a percent yield of 75%. Okay, so this is a lot of stoichiometry over here, so definitely make sure you walk through the steps carefully, make sure you understand every step, and likely you're going to want to do additional practice problems to make sure that you have these concepts down.